Now, football clubs must face sanctions if they fail to comply with diversity reporting requirements and workforce targets. Kick It Out's chief executive Tony Burnett said those words. Now, this is findings published by the FA today show that clubs have failed to hit any of their diversity targets for their leadership and coaching positions. Yeah, the FA released data today and it showed the 53 clubs signed up to the Football Leadership Diversity Code collectively failed to meet all eight of their hiring targets, which were set last season. The pace of change has been criticised as too slow. The three authorities signed up, though, the FA, the Premier League and the EFL, did meet their targets for the year. Now, to speed things up, the FA plans to introduce a new rule from next season, making it mandatory for professional clubs to report data on age, sex, gender, ethnicity, disability and sexual orientation. Now, that change will be consulted upon before being introduced. Now, of the clubs taking part, 9.1% of new senior leadership roles were given to people of black, Asian or mixed heritage. That falls short of the 15% diversity target. Across team operations, that figure is at 11.2%, again short of the 15% target. Now, clubs have been given a target of 30% of new senior leadership appointments to be women. Currently, that figure is 23%. And in regard of team operations, which can include roles like scouting, recruitment, sports science and analysis, the clubs have all but met the target, coming in at 29.9%. Well, Tony Burnett, Chief Executive of Kick It Out, joins us now. Tony, I seem to speak to you every week. Love, the, love to speak to you, though I do. It's never a happy topic, is it? So let's, let's get on to this um, problem then. Um, why is there such a lack of ethnic diversity in boardrooms in football? Three things, Mike, uh, and, and good to speak to you. But the, 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 the three things I think any organization that, that attacks EDI, uh, equality, diversity, inclusion in the right way, has three components. The first one is commitment. That's about senior leaders doing the things that are important to drive change and not just tokenistic things. Second one is about capability, having the people in your organization who un understand what needs to change and how to do that. And the third one, and probably most important one, is about compliance. And whilst there are no consequences for, for not achieving anything when it comes to this, this, this field, football continues to, to do nothing to change. And that's, that's the, key, the key challenge here. Now, as last time I looked, there were 92 football clubs in the, in the uh, Premier League and Football League altogether. Only 53 signed up to the code. Why? And that comes back to, to the point I just really mentioned, uh, Mike, which is the, the third point. There, there are no consequences for not signing up. So essentially, if a football club doesn't think this is important or important for their organisation, there, there are no consequences. And I know that the FA uh, are now trying to drive change to, to try and make uh, make some of these these, these areas more compulsory. Um, but the what we've lost now is kind of three years, unfortunately, while football clubs, um, again, carried on doing their own thing in their own way, reappointing the people that go on the merry-go-round of success forever. And we've lost three years of, of people who are talented, not getting the jobs they deserve within the game. So does football actually want to change? I think it does. I think the challenge again is, is you know, we, again, I've seen this in so many industries, Mike. We, we repeat the same mistakes that have, that have been seen so often in other industries. There are models of success right across the, the UK and other parts of the world. And yet we've waited a number of years while football has to go on its own individual learning curve and make exactly the same mistakes. And one of the things that we know is really important, well, two, two things here, is that uh, organisations have to provide transparent representation data. Just as a start point, I've never seen an organisation that's progressed in this space unless they're really open about the representation data and they share that transparently. And the second one is meaningful and tangible targets that organisations are held to account for delivery. And um, not, not voluntary targets, and not sort of the voluntary targets that certainly only cover one aspect of, of the organisation, which is what the, the FLDC was. They only covered recruitment. So it had no impact on retention, no impact on promotion or any of the other things that are really important. And so that, that, that's the key for us. We, we want to see, first and foremost, football commits to providing transparent representation data across the game unequivocally. And we want to see football commit 
to diversity targets from represented groups right across the game at all levels. And then let's go on and try and monitor that. And the, but the data is important so we can really analyse where the blockages are and how we can fix those blockages going forward. Exactly. So if we're talking this time next year and all the targets have been missed again, what do you do to all those clubs who haven't done what they said they would do? Well, and this is where we, we've been we've been lobbying for, for a couple of years now, and um, ever since the, the the football regulator was first mooted, because we we absolutely don't think that football has got the genuine desire and will to drive this issue forward. And I think without regulation, there's a real danger that we waste another ten years of people from underrepresented communities not getting the chances and the opportunities they deserve. So we're calling for football to be regulated, and EDI to be regulated as part of uh, the regulator's powers. And, and so the code of practice that's going to be introduced for the football clubs should absolutely have some really clear diversity requirements in them. And the two main ones have to be data transparency, representation data transparency and target setting and, and some compliance mechanisms for not hitting those targets. Tony, I was reading a lot of stuff around this subject and, and people were um, talking about it. And you've got the usual guff, you know, oh, perhaps they're not qualified and all this nonsense. Just explain why diversity will be better for football. Well, I think there's a, a just one thing to say up front, Mike, is there's a myth of meritocracy in this country whenever we have this discussion. And, and just let's just explore that myth now. You know, we've got in, in our FTSE 100 organisations, we've got seven, that's our 100 biggest organisations, seven chief executives are female. We've got zero chief executives in our FTSE 100 organisations that, that are from black backgrounds. If you look at our NHS, an organisation that's typically populated by people from many parts of the world, 25% of the workforce is from black or Asian backgrounds, 12% in leadership positions. If you look at policing, there's been one black uh, or Asian chief constable in the history of UK policing. Now, anyone who looks at the stats across all industries, not just football, Anyone looks at those stats and has got a rational mind, there's only there's only two options. Either you say that people in represented groups are not as talented and not as capable as white men, or the system has bias. And the system, in lots of cases, has bias. Meritocracy is a myth. Talent, there is an abundance of talent. Opportunity it is not there. 100%. Tony Burnett, kick it out, Chief Exec. Great to speak to you, Tony. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.